What's going on, Badger fans? Let's talk about it. Leon Lowry is back in the fold. I want to talk about why that probably took a lot of maturity on his part, plus Badger's log ball to the Elite Eight. A player leaves in the portal. Lots of really quick things to get caught up on on a quick Locked On Badgers. Let's go. You are Locked On Badgers, your daily podcast on the Wisconsin Badgers. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Hey, what's up, Badger fans? This is just going to be a quick uh, news drop a little bit. Uh, Leon Lowry, the, the transfer commit that was, then wasn't, once again is. There we go. Uh, Leon Lowry recommits to the Badgers after a bit of a whirlwind. I would call it a whirlwind 72 hours where he committed. The This is the 6'4", 230-ish, 240-pound linebacker, outside linebacker out of Syracuse. He committed. 24 hours later, he decommitted, referred everything to his agents. His agents... Listen, I, I need to be careful what I say because I don't I don't know what slander, what isn't slander. His agents basically didn't they they're not agents. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, he removed their um, he removed them from his world. He said, no, I'm going to handle my recruiter from going from now on forward. Then he recommitted to the Badgers. This is Leon Lowry in his own words. I quote. These last 48 hours have been a whirlwind after thinking long and hard about my future. It became clear to me what was really important. I've had great discussions with my coaches and family. There's not a better fit for me and my future than in Madison, Wisconsin. Um, I'm shutting down my recruitment. I will not take any more visits. I'm a Badger on Wisconsin. Let's go. All right, that's it. So a couple things with this. The first is, and in my show notes, I actually put it as the last bullet point. It says buckle in. I might as well just talk about it now. This is somewhat recruiting now now this one is is weird but like recruiting you're gonna see more twists and turns with the portal with nil with these agents who let me just paint with a broad brush a lot of them uh you're gonna see brian smith i have brian smith on the show today that show drops tomorrow we talk about nil agents and he goes off he's, he's like yeah, we there's words we use to describe these people that i can't even say on the show so you're gonna hear brian smith talk about these people a little bit tomorrow uh, but the, the long and short of it is we're going to see more twists and turns with the portal, with NIL. Things are going to happen that are going to look weird. Just got to buckle in and kind of ride the storm. Um, Leon Lowry is a great kid. When he first came on, I talked about it. I said, this is a great pickup at a position of need. He's athletic. Uh, I like it a lot. When he left, I'm like, that stinks. We we need that guy. I like Not necessarily him, but we need somebody in that mold. So when he came, comes back, yeah, like I'm glad he's here. The other thing is, you know, I, I, this is the thing that's, I want to talk about kind of the most and I find maybe most impressive. It's hard. That would be a hard thing to do. Like that takes a little bit of um, a lot of people might have too much pride to decommit from a place and then kind of come back into that place. Right. Even if it's the best fit, um, especially a younger person, he has a lot, quite a few other offers. Leon Lowry is stacked up other offers. You know, a lot, a lot of people might've found that call that conversation to come back into the fold at Wisconsin, a little difficult. Um, a lot of people would have had too much pride to maybe have that conversation. I think that speaks really well on Leon Lowry, quite frankly, like, you know, like he, I mean, he maybe, I mean, he didn't have the greatest representation. I don't think, I think that was the fly in the ointment and, but he came back, he made the right decision and he didn't let any of that other nonsense kind of cloud it for him. So I think that's impressive from a, from a, that standpoint. And then we go to the football side. Everything I said in the first show about Leon Lowry holds true. He's a disruptive, potential disruptive plus athlete edge guy. And this team needs, quite frankly, this team needs another one. Like that's not enough. It's a great start. We're building a Lego wall right now. And we, we have the base plate on. And now we have a couple bricks on that wall. We need a couple more. Like this is a great first piece to this, this portal though. This is a plan, a target for this, this staff, for Luke Fickle, for Mike Tressel. And he gives you an athletic edge guy. I think he's more athletic than any edge guy we have on the roster right now. And they need another one, but this is a good start. So I'm glad he's back in the fold. It's a good start for the Badgers. Personally, I'm glad for him because it sounded like he wanted to be at Wisconsin. And maybe he just had, you know, maybe some representation. And I'm trying to be as kind as possible that was, wasn't, was maybe didn't have his best interest in mind. And it sounds like he's back to where he wants to be. I think that's great. Like I'm, I think that's great for him, and obviously it's a win for the Badgers. So where do we go from here? They need more, right? This, this portal's just getting started. Wisconsin needs more. I do want to quickly mention Jordan Mayer left uh, the program. He's entering the portal. Outside linebacker came in in last year's class. Originally was the Boston College commit. I liked him. I, 
I think he was a bit of a tweener, though, so I, I don't think it's a huge loss. Uh, he did have some burst on film, but he didn't have great size. I, and I think this defense is moving into a different type of player, so I think it makes sense. It's probably win-win. He probably sees that the defense is moving into a different type of player and looking for a better fit, and the Badgers get a scholarship back, so he left for the portal. I also got to mention Badgers going to the Elite Eight, the women's volleyball team. Let's go. They beat Penn State today 3-1, uh, to one, so – Let's go Elite Eight. Badgers volleyball continues to roll forward. Definitely got to mention that. And again, this is just going to be a quick show. I just want to talk about a little bit. I'm going to be on travel tomorrow, so I didn't know if I'd be able to get anything out tomorrow. So I wanted to just discuss. We got the, the Leon Lowry back in the program. Jordan Mayer left. Women's volleyball into the Elite Eight. Uh, DJ Maytag says, um, uh, Lowry committed because he knows how much our volleyball team rocks. Let's go. Try Glasson mentions Chris Wash. He is the the NIL certified agent, for better for lack of yeah, that's that's what he claimed to be anyway. So he is um, not no longer representing Leon Lowry. Leon Ra Lowry is a Badger. Um, Steve Mitchell says wife says you look weird without your hat. <laughs> it's probably true. That's probably why I wear my hat. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't go hatless too often. I think it's just kind of a comfort thing at this point. What is the age you can no longer wear a hat backwards? Frank, I don't really care to be honest, but I've had people say you're too old to do that. I don't know. I'm going to keep rocking it though. Really quick short story. I have to go be a professional tomorrow. Like I have to go where a company's doing a, a corporate meeting and I need to go and I need to dress up. And it is like the most stressful part of my life. Because I just I don't know how to put clothes together that looks right. My wife laid things out. I went to Target. Uh, it's an absolute disaster for me. My wife came upstairs and I had like my polo shirts and my button ups thrown strewn about everywhere, trying to figure out how to mix and match. I it's a disaster. So that's happening in my life right now. Uh, Jake Ainaro says, "Let's go." Josh Dobbins says, "Good for him. Taking a moment to feel confident in making the right choice for him and us. Welcome back, Go Bucky." I agree. Um, Forrest Aguirre said volleyball beat the living crap out of Penn State. Hope the football team can do the next, uh, do, do the same next time we play the Nittany Lions. That it has been so, I feel like it's been so long since we beat Penn State. Um, it's frustrating, man. And there's games we should have had and there's games they've just knocked us around. But yeah, it's, I agree there, man. Dan, uh, Donnie Hayes says, are we surprised more Badgers haven't entered the portal? I am. I'm going to be honest. I am. What are we at? Six? Seven? Somebody let me know if we're at six or seven. Um, maybe, or if I'm off on that. I I will. I would have expected more. I'm going to be honest. I still expect more to come, though, by the way. And by the way, keep in mind, this is just the first window. There's another window that opens up after spring. So as some of these recruits come in, that's that's maybe something to really key in on. This is a really big, dynamic recruiting class for Luke Fickle, Longo, Trestle, Max, and Pat. This entire recruiting department. As those guys come in, th some of those players are going to steal reps from upperclassmen, right? And after spring practice, especially with the early enrollees coming in, it might be evident for some upperclassmen that their roles are going to be further diminished. And you might see another mini wave enter the portal at that point. So I would keep that in mind. Donnie Hayes says eight with Mayer today. Myers today, sorry. Let's see. Zach Bart says, uh, glad he dumped the zero and recommitted to the hero. That's a great one there. I agree. DJ Maytag says he also expected more to go into the portal. Um DJ Maytag says he expected 10 to 15. I think more is coming. So I think we're going to get to that 10 to 15, DJ. I really do. So I think your ultimate number is going to be roughly correct. Um, I, I There's some names, I, I think, but I, I don't I don't want to speculate on that. Like, I don't want to put that out there. I don't think that's fair to players. Uh, so I'm not going to put it up. But I think there's more. You can look at positions. Like, I don't think we're done at certain positions. So I would expect more to come in. That's uh, Tyler Schieber says... Prescott decommitted thoughts. Sounds like the staff, you know, and this happens sometimes. You, you get on these players so early. It sounded like the staff kind of, for lack of a better term, cooled on him. Uh, it, it was kind of framed as a mutual decommitment. These things happen too. Is when you get on players early, they commit. Sometimes maybe they don't develop quite. That last year doesn't go quite as well as you thought it would, or maybe they were looking for other players. He was a he was a good recruit when they got him. I mean, Brian Smith really liked him. I'm not the type of guy who's going to throw water on every recruit that leaves and, and pump up every single recruit that comes in. I liked him. Uh, I thought the film was pretty good. Physicality was there. Uh, but sometimes it just, for whatever reason, maybe the staff was looking for some type of better development that didn't happen. Maybe the staff felt like maybe he wasn't all in. I don't know. It doesn't mean anything bad. It just means 
you know, you're not a fit with everybody and everybody's not a fit with you. I think it's probably one of those scenarios. I bet you he gets picked up somewhere. Um, but I'm not 100% sure. I, these things do happen, though. A lot of times they happen closer to signing day. And, I mean, I guess we're pretty close to early signing day at this point. But a lot of times they happen right before. And the players have really have the opportunity to find another spot. And you always feel for guys in those situations. Forrest Aguirre said, portal bleeding has been much less than expected. DK was the only real surprise to me. You know, I was thinking about this the other day. And we're just doing a quick show here, but I, I love all the comments and I could talk badges with y'all for hours, quite frankly. I could just start up a live stream and just talk, talk, talk with all the great comments we get from you guys. Um, yeah, to me, DK wasn't a real, a real big surprise. Uh, it's gonna, I'm gonna be honest on that one. It wasn't a huge surprise to me to see it. I I feel like we saw, you know, a receiver leave, our receivers coach leave. I think maybe that's been in the works a little longer than people realize or potentially. And the, the passing game was just kind of a problem. He was recruited to play in a different type of system. And I I just felt like it never really gelled. And he probably wanted a new fit. Uh, that, to me, that wasn't a huge surprise. Um, let's see. Some more comments here. Do you see any other receivers leaving from Spencer Kim? It, I think it's possible. The, the only thing with receivers, you look at that room and – a lot of the guys are young guys that this staff seemed high on and started to play late, or they just transferred in, right? The guys like Pauling, CJ, Bryson Green, Quincy Burroughs, those guys all transferred in already once. So to lose another, to transfer again, well, Burroughs had a coaching change, but some of those other guys, you lose a year of eligibility, right? If you were to transfer again. And then some of the younger guys on the roster, the staff was getting, getting Benny Anthony run. They were getting, um, they really like Chris Brooks in the spring. They raved about him. So it seems like they like some of the young guys. Some of the upperclassmen guys have already transferred once. So I don't really think so unless it's a guy like a a guy who hasn't played much. Like Tommy McIntosh hasn't played a lot, and he's been a little buried. But he's still young enough that he can certainly continue battling for a roster spot as well. So I don't know. I'm not sure if I see much more else there. Anyway, guys, we're going to wrap it there. Uh, my biggest thing is I just wanted to be excited about Leon Lowry coming back in the program. I'm not playing the cannons again. He only gets one cannon. You get one cannon the first time you come in. But he's a big pickup. He's at athletic edge. This uh, staff identified early, and it fits such an enormous need for the Badgers. They need disruptive guys. And he can't be the only one. This this offseason in the portal isn't good enough if he's the only front seven potential disruptive guy you get. So they got to add more. But it's a lot easier to add one more than to not get Lowry back in the fold and have to get two more. And the other thing I'd say, as I mentioned, I think it's a good sign for Lowry. I think it's a good sign for maturity that, like, he would come back to Wisconsin, right? Again, a lot of people would be a little too proud. They they would have felt like they messed it up, and they wouldn't want to go back and say, oh, can I come back? There's That's a really good sign from a maturity standpoint from Lowry. I, I like that. And I like the fact that he wants to be here. He clearly wants to be here. And he made the necessary moves to make it happen. Like, this other guy – you know, he wants to be the rudder of his ship. And this other guy was starting to be the rudder of his ship a little bit. And he said, no, no, you walk the plank. I'm going to be the rudder of my own ship. And my, my ship points to Madison. My ship docks in like Mendota. Like that's that's where we're going to end up. And I like that fact. I like that aspect about it. And again, I love the the athletic pedigree he brings. So um, on Wisconsin, he says the same thing. Credit that he sucked it up and came back. Yeah, I agree. I absolutely agree. How many portal? This is from Smo. What's up, Smo? How many portal receiver do you think the uh, portal receivers do you think they'll sign? Not a lot of experience coming back to Saints Green and Pauling. I, they're they're going to add at least one. I can see them adding two. Uh, again, it's not a big high school recruiting class. They just lost two receivers into the portal. I think one for sure. If they find the right two, they'll add two transfer portal receivers. Uh, I could definitely see that. Um, all right, let's let's roll there again on Wisconsin. Appreciate all of y'all so so much. Have a great Friday tomorrow if we don't talk. Uh, good show with Brian Smith dropping tomorrow in the morning. We're going to talk about the uh, NIL agents and Brian Smith's industry experience with them. That's a fun talk. And then we're going to get into his thoughts on some of the transfer portal targets that Wisconsin has coming in on visits, including the quarterback. So a lot coming up tomorrow. Be sure to tune into that. And as always, y'all are amazing. Thank you so much on Wisconsin. And let us talk tomorrow. Uh, a couple more comments I didn't get to here. I'll take comments I didn't get here, and I'll just wrap them up, and we'll do a Q&A show on it. So on Wisconsin. Thank you guys so much. We'll talk later.